So I made a unicorn cake a couple of weeks ago and I loved the idea of the meringue wings. So I had so much fun making it that I thought I want to do this for another project. So I decided to come up with some sort of Halloween treat and in the end I decided on a bat with meringue wings. So let's get started. I preheated my oven to 200 degrees, then I poured my egg whites into my mixing bowl and whisked until it was frothy. At this point I added my cream of tartare and beat until soft peaks formed. I then slowly added my granulated sugar and my black food color. I decided to add my color at this time to avoid over mixing. Once I hit stiff peaks, I folded in my powdered sugar. I created this bat wing template that I will link up in the description box below if you would like to use it as well. After cutting them out, I flipped them over so that I could see the image through the parchment paper while piping out the wings. I spaced the wings about 4 inches apart and taped them and the parchment paper down. I liked using this tip number 366 last time, so I decided to use it again for this project. I first outlined the bat wing and then filled it in. I didn't want the lines to appear in the final project, so I used a butter knife to smooth them out. I connected them together at the bottom and then smoothed everything together with my butter knife. To make the bones of the wings, I piped out three lines starting at the top of the wing and ending at the highest peak of each dip on the wing. I placed this in the oven for two hours, or if you're not in a hurry, one hour, and then let it sit overnight in the oven. So at this point, you're going to want to put your cake on top of your final cake stand or plate that you plan on using to present it on. This way you can push your cake all the way to the front of your cake stand and then that way you'll have room for your meringue wings later. Moving on to the cake, I am using this tip number 233 for a hairy effect on the bat's body. I squeezed out little patches of hair all over the cake covering completely. I also want to mention that I made the black frosting by dyeing some chocolate frosting. Using chocolate eliminates the need for a lot of food coloring when making your frosting. Since I'm not using buttercream, my frosting didn't crust over rapidly, so I was able to attach my bat wings directly onto the back of my cake, resting the flat part of the wings on my cake stand. For the bat's eyes, I rolled out yellow fondant and cut out two one and three quarter inch circles. I used the open end of my tip number 12 to cut out the two smaller circles for his pupils. For his ears, I cut out a leaf shape out of black fondant and then cut it in half. I curved them slightly and stood them up to harden. For his fangs, I cut two straight lines on the top and bottom inside of some white fondant and then cut out two triangles. I rolled out some black fondant for a smile and then cut out two smaller pieces for the curves at the end of the smile. For the catch light on his eyes, I used the smaller end of my tip number 12 to pop out two more circles. I then used my cake boss tip number 6 to pop out two smaller than small circles. <laughs> Is that how you say that? I applied them onto each eye with water and placed them onto the front of my cake, having one pupil pointing down and the other angled up slightly. So that way you have the appearance of going batty. I placed his smile underneath his eyes and applied each of the smaller pieces on either side of his smile, curving them upward. I added his little teefees and I was done. And here he is. 
is, here is our I am going batty bat cake. I hope that you enjoyed my very first Halloween tutorial this year. If you like this tutorial, please give me a big thumbs up. If you make this treat, please send me a photo so I can share it on all of my social media outlets. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. That way you'll be notified every time I post a new tutorial. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye guys.